Let's face it, one of the reasons you were interested in this project is because it's built on Drupal. Drupal is very hard to use, but Elms seeks to remove the mystifying fact that is the Drupal contrib and community modules that can make Drupal very easy to use. So let's see the fact that this is still Drupal under the hood. Clicking the wrench in the bottom left will give you access to what is traditionally known as the admin menu in Drupal. You can see that we've created an Elms container that includes quick links into different parts of Drupal structure so that you can make sense of it a little more quickly. You see we have edit microsite settings and this allows you to jump into editing the campus list as well as the semesters and what they're named. We can also modify these parent page settings. So you see this is just taking you into the CCK form of a version to modify these settings. Um, parent pages, if I go to parent pages, there's some settings associated to that specific to Elms, such as what the default page is. And this is for a case where you know, a, a student technically could have access to the marketing and the student page. Which one do you want to display to them first? Um, there's some other system defaults that you can put in place, such as what theme to use when a, a version is created, um, themes that are not allowed to be used in the creation but might actually still be needed by the system traditionally, such as Elms Cube, which is just a slight modification of the Cube theme. Um, you can see there's user management, which this is going to be import, or, uh, implemented fully at a later point in time, but user management is just part of the core Drupal package as well as uh, there's individual version management of users, whereas this is seeking to be kind of a global thing in the future. Uh, there's also site statuses, so you can get kind of a, you know, the ability to change these and what the workflow state is. Again, this is just jump, dumping you into parts of the Drupal user interface. Um, if you're unfamiliar with features and, and distribution-based development, I highly recommend going to administer and then site building and checking out context, features, the modules page, as well as some of the views that have been used to create this system. Uh, features enables you to bundle things together in a way that makes sense. And um, Elms does this through you know, more or less three different areas of features. So you have things that more or less drive the entire system to look and feel the way it does, which is your, your bottom navigation, your left navigation, your top navigation, um, user management, which has been rolled into the sites, Elm site, which is actually the underlying architecture to uh, power versions and offerings. You have Elm's parent, which is actually the course. And so this helps create a relationship between sites and parents and you know the parent pages module um, so that you can have additional flexibility. Uh, this is how we're actually able to turn Elms into much more than just a course, you know, CMS type of a system. Um, you're able to use the, the CLE, for example, to have students collaborate utilizing the same architecture and just kind of renaming it. Um, as part of the install routine, you'll see there's Elms ICMS, which just bundles up the direct settings to create the system initially. And obviously that then conflicts with Elms CLE completely because CLE seeks to make it more of a collaborative experience. Um, it would be very easy to make changes to the system, change some of the terminology, come back to this page and recreate the Elms ICMS feature as something else, you know, name it My Elms ICMS or um, <clears throat> whatever, I mean, honestly, there's unlimited options of a thing that has many sites associated to it. So you come up with what that use case is, you can rename it there, utilizing some of the functionality uh, already in the system. You then have features which get into the things that are available specifically within Elm sites. And so that gets you things like Elm's terms, the timeline, uh, there's an example for user import, there's the schedule, uh, resources that has to do with kind of the global scope resources. So that one's actually not specific to Elm sites. Um, all of these have been developed under a specification known as Kit, and Kit compliance should enable the bulk of this functionality to work inside a platform like Open Atrium, um, as well as Open Atrium functionality to work inside Elms, as well as any other system that follows Kit compliancy, quite honestly. Uh, so it's really exciting. Some of the things you'll be able to, to swap between systems. Uh, going to the modules page might look a little different. 
than you're used to administering a Drupal site. We have a module filters project that makes it a little cleaner and a little easier to use. Uh, so it might take some time to get used to the way that we have Drupal set up. I mean, it is a, an organic groups based system, uh, but I highly recommend going through and checking it out. Um, the way that we do the, the item renaming, and so you might see some inconsistencies at times that you need to clean up, is uh, there's a project called String Overrides. Uh, so if you see something you don't like necessarily uh, in the way that we named it, you can go ahead and override things in String Overrides. And so this is where you get the changing of the language from things like sites to versions or offerings in certain instances. Um, you know, instead of add parent, you can convert it to add course. Minor things like this that can craft a completely different experience while allowing under the hood functionality to still run the way it should and be very developer centric and not education centric necessarily. So this is a very important page for overriding all those names. And actually, if you see any piece of text in the system and you think that you can make a better description for for the, relaying that to your people, um, you can go into this page and copy and paste it into the first part and then paste it into, into the second area. So you can even, you know, if you see it's at workflow, you can even override uh, things that are dynamically generated in terms of their title. Now, this will start to most likely conflict with uh, installing Elms in different languages. Uh, I don't know that yet because we haven't we haven't had a use case for installing it in other languages outside of verifying the fact that it does work. Uh, some other things to check out with this that might be a little different. Uh, it uses Perl, which is P-U-R-L, as well as spaces. Those projects can be slightly confusing at times, um, but we've got them more or less helping organic groups be more powerful than it already is. So if you have any questions, make sure to post lots of issues to the issue queue on Drupal.org as uh, the distribution is fully packaged and all code is available through Drupal.org.